hold them right there. And let him go. So when we work the puppy initially, he holds the puppy back while I get the puppy focused. And then as soon as the puppy's focused, I, he lets the puppy go and I draw the puppy into the equipment. Then when he's biting the equipment, I'll keep it alive in his mouth, but I always kind of pull forward on the puppy's mouth to keep tension in the item that he's biting. I can touch him, put a little tension in it. Touch him, put a little tension in it. Touch him, put a little tension. Let him bite, oh, he does. I let him have it, but then I, I bring it back to life again when I let him have it. So I can keep bringing him back to play with me. So he bites in, I touch his body. All this body touching is desensitizing, but it's also kind of diagnostic. I decide, what is this puppy like? Is he bothered by me touching him? Each of those pieces. Good puppy, huh? Good boy. Oh. Hand down, opposition. Hand, opposition. Nice. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Good boy, huh? The, the line on the object also keeps him from running away. So I can let him have it, but he can't take off with it, and I can bring him back to play with me again. So. Good boy, huh? The other thing is I can do is I can let the, the item go dead for a second and then bring it back to life again, which keeps the puppy interested in biting something that isn't moving. One of the harder things we have to do. We want the dogs to want to hold on to something that isn't necessarily moving. Good puppy, huh? Good boy, huh? There we go. And again, I make my auditory stimulator when I'm agitating the puppy. And that way the puppy associates that sound with bite work, so later on, if I need to stimulate the puppy, I can. Good boy. Good. Perfect. Oh yeah, hold on. Bring him back here. So, <laughs> the other thing we can do while we're playing with the puppy, let him go, while we're playing with the puppy, is as I'm tugging with him, I can reach down and grab this and I can pull against him, and then I can go again, right? It gets the puppy used to back pressure. I pull, and then we go again. Oh, good boy. You can take him with that, perfect. So this puppy is into the work. He really wants to do it. And so he's coming out, he's pulling on the harness, he wants to go forward, all that kind of stuff. So I, there isn't really such a thing as equipment bias at this stage. We're preventing it from happening. So whatever he bit in the beginning, so when I give him that, that little puppy sleeve, that's what he's focusing his energy onto. It feels a certain way. So when I switch equipment, it feels different. And so he starts looking for the familiar sensation. So that's the infancy of equipment bias. So if we let that happen, I say, ooh, look, he doesn't want to bite this. And I switch back to the other one. I reinforce that. And so what I do is just get him fired up enough so that he actually bites the new one. And then I let him win it, and he takes it out. So I prevent him from doing that. Of course, the dog has to be fire upable, as it were. <laughs> is that a word, right? So we have to be able to actually get him stimulated enough so that he forgets about his preferences and takes the, the other item. So this puppy was fine. And in this whole process, we're teaching the puppy to be handled and manipulated, leash pressure, I'm touching his body, petting him, trying to get him to hold onto the item, carry it around and bring it back to me. We're controlling it, he's on a leash and I'm on, a, uh, on another line so I can reel him in and get him to play with me again. And we're just building little habits, right? This is the kind of puppy that we don't need to do very much bite work with. He's very stable. He's not nervous. He doesn't mind me touching. He doesn't care about the stick. He has a huge desire to bite. He's very confident when he's biting, and so his issues are going to be in the obedience. And so we get him fired up here. We do six to ten sessions of bite work before he starts teething, and then we, that's enough. Like, don't need any more than that. We shelve it, and then he spends a lot of time working on recalls, 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 and more recalls, right? And playing with the puppy, getting the puppy to re-engage with you, focus, 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 and more focus, engagement stuff. And then when we come back to bite work post-teething, at six months old, he's going to be fired up and ready to go immediately. As soon as he hears the stick and we go, and he's on that harness, he's going to be back right where he is. Only we'll have a better relationship between he and the handler so that when we start to ask him to contain himself, which will be very quickly in that process because of his motivation, then we'll reduce the amount of conflict that's inherent in that process. Okay.